<laughs> anyway, Gillian has seen adders and she's going to tell us more about them. Gillian. <laughs> Well, we're hoping to see adders as well, uh, Pia, but yes, we're back at Gwaith Powder. And we've come up to one of the highest points in the nature reserve because it's a really good chance to take a look at some of the features that make this such a superb reserve. We've got the tidal estuary behind me, the steep-sided valleys and a real mosaic of habitat. Now, the adders do really well in this habitat here. That's a female there, and she may be gravid, uh, possibly at this time of year. That's a male with a much more contrasting black on white pattern, that real telltale zigzag. Beautiful animals. Now these are one of the most, well, the most northerly occurring snakes in the world. They're found all the way into the Arctic Circle. They'll mate in April into May and they'll stay active right the way through until October when they return to their high binacular in, for the winter. So Gwaith, at Gwaith, the University of Bangor, and also the Wildlife Trust monitor the adder populations here. And the way they do that is they use these very bog standard roof felting tiles. Now, we know there's not one any, any under here, so we can have a little closer look. So the tiles effectively, especially on cold days, will soak up the heat from the sun and they'll act like little heat blankets. And the adders and any other reptiles like the slow worms will actually slide underneath that and soak up that heat. So it's a really great resource. This is really one of the most effective ways to monitor the populations because if you take a look at the habitat around here, you'll see why it is so very difficult to actually count absolute numbers. It's a real tangle of gorse and bracken. A lot of that habitat is really very difficult to get into. It's certainly great for the adders, great for their prey items, but mo really the most dedicated scientists and volunteers will get right into that. So. When we think about adders, I'm sure there's one fact that you all know about adders, which is they're Britain's only venomous snake. And that makes us think of these ambush predators lying to pounce on things. But actually, they have other behavior that is in their repertoire that's quite interesting. Now, one of our story developers, Jack Richards, managed to film some really beautiful behavior in South Wales near Bridgend. And this is what it is. Look at this. Now, this is two males. And it looks like they're dancing, but this is more the snake version of a rut. Now, they are armed with fangs and venom. They could be fighting to the death, but that'd be totally pointless, to be honest. Instead, they choose to have a little duel where they try to pin the opponent's head down. So that's what they're trying to do here. They're trying to get the upper hand or the upper head, if you like. And it doesn't need to be for very long. Just a brief moment of a hold down is all it takes for the adders to establish dominance. If you watch carefully, it doesn't last long. And there it is, dominance established and they disengage. Now, like I said, it is difficult to count absolute numbers, but what you can do is monitor trends. And of the 129 sites around the whole country of adder populations that have been monitored, 90% of them are in decline. And it's not just about absolute numbers, it's about fragmented habitat and something called inbreeding depression. Now, this is the genetic health of population. Now, here's one of those snake sheds that Michaela said she saw. This is one that we've been handed a specimen um, from the university. Now, this is what scientists use to monitor the genetic health of populations. All they need is a tiny fragment of this, something like half a square centimeter is enough to provide genetic material to tell them the health of the, of the individual, but also the health of the whole population. And what they're finding is here at Gwaith, but also other populations, is that the snakes are very inbred, and this means that their breeding success is quite low. It means that their survival rates are low as well. So what's interesting, or what maybe what is quite stark, is if we do absolutely nothing, these populations, which are isolated, they're like island populations, um, will go extinct within the 10 years or so, so until 2032 it's thought. So that's the bad news. There is good news. Like we said earlier, like Chris said, the joined up thinking, linking up these habitats and allowing these snakes to breed and disperse is the key. And you can definitely support your national and local conservation organizations that are helping to link up these 
beautiful habitats for the adders and also for other wildlife. Now, the other thing I find interesting is adders, of course, and snakes in general, people are very scared of them. But what I find is that you love to send us your photos when you do come across adders. So these are some of the photos you sent in. It's a great opportunity to get a nice close look at some of these. Now, these are the cold adaptations. You can see the scales there and there's black skin under those scales. They're dark body that helps them to trap that heat, soak up that heat from the sun during the cold weather, cold springs and the cold air. So absolutely fantastic animals, but facing some big challenges. 